The Pacific Northwest is dotted with dangerous volcanoes. Thanks, Chase. Well, scientists have discovered something unusual on the seafloor miles off the Oregon coast to help them under better understand earthquake zones. This is especially important for coastal communities that could get flooding from an earthquake within half an hour after the quake starts. began with a sound no one could explain. A sudden, distant boom. So deep, it rattled the windows of homes in La Pine and echoed through the pine forests like a warning. Then another, dogs howled, car alarms tripped. Some locals thought it was military activity. Others feared an earthquake. But when the ground split open days later, the real fear began. Massive fissures, some as wide as a car, stretching for hundreds of feet tore across central Oregon like the land itself was ripping apart. Trails were destroyed, roadways buckled, fields cracked wide open, and the earth, once silent and still, seemed to breathe with ancient pressure. People watched in disbelief. Videos flooded social media. But when geologists arrived on the scene, their findings made it even more terrifying. These weren't random cracks they followed fault lines previously considered dormant. Lines connected to Newberry Caldera, a 1,200 square kilometer volcanic complex just 20 miles away. That volcano hasn't erupted in over a thousand years. Until now, it was believed to be at rest. Newberry National Volcanic Monument is located just a short drive south of Bend in Central Oregon. It consists of 54,000 acres of lava flows, lakes, waterfalls, trails, and hot springs. So why is the ground tearing itself open? What kind of force builds in silence for centuries, then explodes without warning? And if this is just the beginning, what comes next? One scientist described it as the earth flexing a muscle it hasn't moved in over a millennium. Another called it a geologic heartbeat, finally skipping a beat. Oregon's hidden danger just surfaced. Central Oregon, a land shaped by ancient fire, now cloaked in pine and silence. Lava fields lie frozen in time. Volcanic glass crunches beneath hikers' boots. And yet, for generations, people have built homes, trails, and towns upon this fragile crust believing it's safe. But nature is stirring again, and not quietly. It started with a sound, strange, deep, a low frequency boom that rolled through Lapine and Sun River like a hidden wave. It wasn't thunder. There were no clouds. It was something else entirely. Then came the trembling. Locals described it as if the ground sighed, a long, slow vibration, like pressure exhaling from the Earth's lungs. Dogs refused to go outside, some residents felt dizzy. And then, just days later, the surface split. Massive fissures, meter-wide, hundreds of feet long, tore across fields, forests, and roadbeds. One crack followed a hiking trail so precisely it looked carved by a giant blade. Another opened beneath a residential driveway, exposing warm soil beneath the top crust. Steam rose in the cold morning air. At first, it seemed like a rare quake, a freak event. But then experts arrived, and what they're seeing, it's not normal at all. A landscape under pressure. When the ground split, scientists knew they had only a small window to act. Within 24 hours, a multidisciplinary team from Oregon State University and the USGS deployed to the site, armed with ground-penetrating radar, thermal drones, gas sensors, and portable seismic arrays. Their first impression? The land wasn't just reacting, it was warning us. The fissures followed no chaotic path. They weren't shaped by random seismic shaking. Instead, they aligned like the fault lines on a cracked eggshell, pointing directly toward one of the most feared features in the region, the Newberry Caldera. This massive volcanic complex spans more than 1,200 square kilometers. A company called Davenport Newberry, just outside the Newberry Volcanic Crater in Central Oregon. 
bigger than Los Angeles and has a long history of violent, diverse eruptions. Shield-like in shape, but unpredictable in behavior, it has produced lava flows, ash plumes, pyroclastic surges, and explosive crater collapses. And until now, it has slept in silence. But silence doesn't mean peace. In recent months, ground-based GPS stations have recorded uplift, first millimeters, then centimeters, then nearly a foot in certain locations. The earth is swelling as if pressure is building beneath its surface. Thermal drones scanning the region picked up unexpected hot zones, long ribbons of heat just beneath the soil surface, places where magma may be creeping closer to the crust. Infrared scans revealed thermal gradients where there shouldn't be any. In one area, the temperature shifted by more than 15 degrees Celsius in a single week. Even more alarming, gas sensors detected spikes in carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide emissions. These aren't gases that drift from nowhere. They come from magma degassing, a process that often signals upward movement of molten rock. Some levels were measured at double the baseline emissions for the region. And then came the seismic chatter, not large earthquakes, but harmonic tremors, continuous, low-frequency vibrations often linked to moving magma. Think of it like a giant tuning fork being struck deep within the earth, humming with subterranean activity. All signs now point to a disturbing reality. The crust isn't just cracking, it's responding to an internal force, heat, gas, movement, that is building toward release. Could this be a slow deformation event, easing pressure gradually? Or is it the early stage of a chain reaction where pressure escalates faster than the land can adapt? One geophysicist called it a squeeze from below. Another likened it to a kettle left too long on a sealed burner. Is this a warning we can interpret in time or a prelude to an eruption no one will be able to stop? They align along a known fault line, one tied to the Newberry Caldera, a sleeping giant just 20 miles away. The area has seen ground uplift in recent months, measured in inches, then feet. CO2 levels have spiked. Thermal anomalies have been detected from drones. Now, the earth is opening. Are we witnessing the opening act? The cracks are just the beginning. This much is becoming clear. What we're witnessing may not be a conclusion, but a prologue, a rehearsal of something far more destructive. Some scientists argue this is a natural release of pressure, a geologic exhale. The earth, they say, is venting better now than all at once later. But others, many others, aren't so optimistic. Because when the earth breaks open like this, it's rarely the end of the story. It's a symptom, a shiver before the fever. And those watching Newberry closely are seeing patterns that mirror past volcanic awakenings across the globe. We're not just talking about cracks. We're talking about seismic swarms, clusters of microquakes, indicating magma rising through fractures. We're talking about gases changing composition, as if magma is nearing the surface and altering the chemical profile of the soil itself. We're talking about ground uplift rates accelerating, thermal plumes thickening, and drone footage showing vegetation beginning to yellow in unnaturally linear paths, possible indicators of heat rising from new subterranean conduits. These are pre-eruption signs, and if magma continues to rise unchecked, it could encounter Oregon's abundant groundwater, a scenario volcanologists dread. A magmatic explosion where water flashes to steam upon contact with magma, causing pressure to spike and rock to fragment violently. It's the kind of eruption that creates more than just lava. It creates ash columns, landslides, crater collapses, flash floods, atmospheric chaos. Why would Newberry suddenly activate now? Some believe it's not Newberry acting alone. That deep beneath Oregon, magma is migrating along ancient fault corridors, reactivating weak points that haven't moved in a thousand years. Look at the timeline. Look at the data. The signs aren't spread over years. They're stacking up within weeks. The last time this happened in the Cascades, the result was Mount Saint, Helens, but even that volcano gave more warning. Here, it's different. Here, it's quieter. And that silence, 
the kind that comes right before the roar, might be the most terrifying sign of all. So, are we witnessing the opening act, or are we standing in the final seconds before the curtain rises on something we can't control? A pattern the Pacific Northwest shouldn't ignore. This isn't just about one event, one crack, one volcano. It's about a pattern, a cascading sequence of clues that when placed side by side, paint a picture that is hard to ignore. In recent months, geologists have logged a sharp uptick in microseismicity throughout the Cascade Range. Tiny quakes, too small for humans to feel, but unmistakable to instruments, have rippled beneath Mount Hood, South Sister, and Mount Jefferson. On their own, they might not warrant alarm, but together, they resemble the pre-eruption seismic fingerprints seen in volcanic systems from Iceland to Indonesia. And it's not just seismic activity. Months ago, new fumaroles, vents that release steam and volcanic gases, unexpectedly opened near East Lake inside the Newberry Caldera. Alarming. Some formed along previously inactive fault lines, indicating the underground system is restructuring itself. Thermal anomalies are on the rise. In one documented case, a patch of forest soil near Paulina Peak measured 38 degrees Celsius, more than 20 degrees above normal for that depth and season. Vegetation has started to discolor in radial patterns near vent sites. Trees die not from drought or disease, but from invisible heat rising from below. Even animals are acting strangely. Raptors have abandoned their nesting areas. Elk herds have changed migratory paths. And in one strange case, a swarm of rodents was seen fleeing the caldera rim en masse. Coincidence or instinct responding to something we can't yet see? Look at the trend lines. They're not flat. They're rising. Rising gases. Rising heat. Rising movement. Rising fear. Is Oregon's crust warning us? Is the Pacific Northwest entering a phase of tectonic reawakening? The region sits atop the Cascadia subduction zone, a tectonic time bomb capable of producing magnitude 9.0 plus earthquakes. It also cradles the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a chain of more than a dozen volcanoes fed by complex magma plumbing. If these clues are connected, the threat extends far beyond Lapine or Sun River. It stretches across state lines, into Washington, into California, across the spine of the West Coast. And if the past has taught us anything, it's that Earth doesn't whisper warnings twice. So the question remains, are we listening or are we too late? What happens if this escalates? If pressure continues to build beneath central Oregon, we may be on the brink of a geological chain reaction. The consequences could unfold in stages or all at once. The first stage, explosive venting of gas and steam. Superheated groundwater could flash into vapor, expanding violently and fracturing overlying rock. This could send debris skyward and ignite wildfires in already dry, pine-covered landscapes. Residents could be caught off guard by what would look like a sudden, low-altitude eruption. Then comes ground rupture. If magma forces its way upward, we could see rapid fault slippage, triggering earthquakes and reshaping the surface. Roads would fracture, buildings could tilt, pipelines and infrastructure, especially those near Lapine, Sun River, and even Bend, might be severely damaged in minutes. If magma breaches the surface beneath one of the region's lakes, like Paulina or East Lake, the result could be cataclysmic. As water rushes into volcanic vents, it would instantly flash to steam, resulting in a phreatomagmatic explosion. This could drain an entire lake in seconds and trigger a lahar, a volcanic mud flow capable of sweeping away entire neighborhoods downstream. Worse still, if a full-scale eruption occurs, ash clouds could rise thousands of feet into the atmosphere. This wouldn't just ground aircraft across the Pacific Northwest. It could also trigger health crises from toxic ash inhalation and disrupt agriculture by blanketing crops across several counties. But the most frightening possibility, caldera collapse. If a large volume of magma escapes the chamber, the land above could collapse into the void, creating a massive sinkhole dozens of square miles wide. It's happened before, in Iceland, in Indonesia, and yes, potentially here at Newberry, long before humans were keeping records. And this eruption 
might not be isolated, with deep magmatic roots linking the entire Cascade Arc from Mount Jefferson and Three Sisters to Mount Rainier. An eruption at Newberry could destabilize pressure zones elsewhere. Think of it as pulling a thread in the Earth's crust. You don't always know what else will unravel. Could we be approaching a scenario where multiple volcanoes awaken in sequence? Could this event be the spark that reactivates dormant systems all along the Pacific Northwest? The truth is, we don't know. But every signal, every crack, every spike in gas or heat is a clue. And together, they paint a picture not of release, but of escalation. And it might not stop with Newberry. The entire Cascade volcanic arc, Mount Jefferson, Three Sisters, even Rainier, is connected by deep magmatic roots. So what now? The fissures are open, the gases are rising, and the tremors are continuing. But what happens next may depend not on nature, but on how fast we respond. Right now, the region is caught in a high-stakes waiting game. Geologists are deploying more drones, more seismic sensors, more NSAR passes than ever before. The skies over Newberry are now routinely scanned for thermal anomalies. But is it enough? Some scientists are calling for a full-scale volcanic emergency response. They argue this isn't just a monitoring phase, it's a containment race. Because if magma reaches the surface, containment becomes impossible. Civil defense authorities have begun mapping updated evacuation zones, many of which now include populated areas for the first time in decades. Local officials in Deschutes County have quietly met with FEMA representatives. Emergency sirens are being tested, and disaster supply caches are being restocked in Redmond, Bend, and Lapine. Behind the scenes, some hospitals are reviewing ash inhalation protocols. Schools are being briefed on shelter-in-place strategies. Infrastructure planners are nervously recalculating the vulnerability of water mains, electrical lines, and internet cables that cross potential hazard zones. Meanwhile, private citizens are growing anxious. Store shelves are being cleared of bottled water, respirators, and emergency radios. Gasoline sales are up. Campsites near the caldera are eerily empty, while hotels in cities 100 miles away are seeing a spike in bookings. The tension is spreading, and so is the unease. Because deep down, everyone is asking the same terrifying question. What if this is just the beginning? Could Oregon become the epicenter of the next continental volcanic crisis? Could the cracks now spreading through its forests and valleys soon be mirrored in airports, hospitals, and cities across the Northwest? What if this isn't an isolated anomaly, but the ignition point of a long dormant system stretching from the Pacific to the Rockies? And if a chain reaction begins, if the Earth decides now is the time to reshuffle its ancient plates, how much warning will we really get? Days, hours, minutes? The Earth doesn't open without reason. It doesn't sigh without memory, and it doesn't crack without consequence. It is speaking in fractures, in tremors, in heat. And while scientists race to decode the signals, the rest of us are left asking a chilling question. What do you think? Could these fissures be the start of a larger tectonic shift? Or are they a one-off release of pressure from deep below? Let us know what you'd do if the ground split beneath your feet. Like this video, if you think Oregon deserves more geological attention, subscribe for the latest updates from Earth's most mysterious corners. Because sometimes, the Earth doesn't whisper, it cracks.